Welcome to International Securities Exchange's podcast series, facilitated by renowned educators. ISE podcasts are intended to teach beginning as well as seasoned investors the ins and outs of trading. To find an updated list of podcasts, please visit www.isc.com slash podcasts. Please be sure to listen to our important message following this episode regarding the risks of investing in exchange-traded options. So, now that the dollar has reversed and has skyrocketed and done so very violently, which means that these uh, corporate, uh, these CFOs did not have enough time to hedge their currency exposure, expect that currency contribution to possibly weigh on earnings going forward. Not only will it no longer be a contribution, but it could actually cause softer earnings going forward. And that, too, is one of the reasons why the market is risk-averse. So one of the other correlations that we're watching is a correlation between stocks and dollar-yen. Because when the markets are risk averse, they sell stocks. And when they sell stocks, so they sell dollar yet. The blue line in this chart is a weekly chart, is a chart of dollar yen, and the red line is a chart of the S P five hundred. And you can see here, you know, I created these on my deal book charts. You can see here that the correlation is very, very close. I mean they're basically near mirror images of each other. And guess what? Just like that oil chart that we looked at, here's an intraday chart of the S&P 500 and of dollar yen. And guess what? Tick for tick, stocks and dollar yen are moving alongside each other. And once again, if you look closely, at some point, the red line leads the blue line, which means that stocks at many points is leading the move in dollar yen. And September, you know, based upon 50 years worth of data, tends to be the worst performing month for stocks on a return basis. This study was done by Plexus Asset Management. They looked back at 50 years worth of data on seasonality for the stock market, and they found that the lowest average return was indeed in the month of September. So therefore, if you expect more losses in the blue line, sorry, in the red line, or if you expect the Dow to hit Dow 10,000, then expect all yen to hit 100. So in what type of environment do carry trades do best? Just to review, we need an environment of low volatility, strong risk appetite, and global tightening. And what environments do carry trades do bad? High volatility, risk aversion, and global easing. And in what environment are we in right now? We are in this environment, which is high volatility, risk aversion, and global easing. And because of that, carry trade profitability is a negative and not a positive. Because even if you earn that 500 basis point interest rate differential between the Australian dollar and the U.S. dollar, what you have lost year to date is, let me see if I have my specific chart that I pulled up earlier, but what you've lost year to date is essentially 7%. So you've lost more than you have what you have earned on an interest rate basis. And you probably could continue to lose more as the Reserve Bank of Australia compresses its interest rate differential with the U.S. Federal Reserve. So carry trade survival kit. And this is not a kit to tell you basically, you know, how can you save your carry trades and turn them around? Just tells you what you need to watch. There are three things I always watch when I follow carry trades. Number one is implied volatility. Number two is risk reversal. 
And number three is interest rate expectations. This is a little image of um, interest rate expectations. And as you can see, the left-hand side is where interest rate levels are right now. And the right-hand side is basically where interest rates are expected you know, going forward. And these are not, does not mean interest rate hikes or anything like that. It just is a spread between two-year and three-month LIBOR. Basically tells you that the U.S. dollar and Swiss franc are supposed to have the highest rates, and it degrades from there. The next chart shows you the level of risk reversals. The reason why risk reversals are you know, good to watch, because it tells you how skewed the market is in terms of sentiment. And, um, and basically, you know, when risk reversals are very much favoring one direction, it shows you the skewedness of, of the market's demand for risk. And this is just back, this is a back test study that we did a long time ago on what if I followed these three things, which is implied volatility, risk reversals, and interest rate expectations in determining my carry trade strategy. It would certainly increase your profitability significantly more, and it would help to improve any sort of carry trade return. So trade strategies, spot versus options. You know, I, um, I always, you know, one of the ways to protect yourself in trading carry is to use options. If you insist on trading carry, I, mean, I, don't, I don't encourage it because, as you saw in the list earlier, we have three environments where carry trades work hor horribly in, and each of the three describes the current market environment. But if you insist on trading carry trades, you might want to hedge with an option. Um, in low markets, in low volatility markets, you know, options is not really, um, you know, can be helpful, but isn't really necessary. But in high volatility environments, you can earn on your op when volatility ri volatility rises helps to increase the value of an option. So therefore, it may be profitable to go into these, you know, long positions on, you know, puts or calls in addition to having spots. So one example may be that your long spot and then you may want to buy like a put option to hedge yourself. And so this is a return from selling one week at the money forward straddles with no delta hedging. Um, and it just shows you that, you know, basically if you use, I, I think that shows you that if you use options as well, it definitely improves your return sometimes, um, you know, on your, on your position. So with that, I want to open up the floor to any questions about the market, what's going on, about the dollar. Um, and, and anything else you want to ask. So Steve, how should we, how should we do Kevin, this? Um, why don't I try to find questions and then you could look at questions. So I'll find some and then you know, I'll, I'll turn it back to you. Um, you may want to, you know, you may find some other questions that seem very important to you. But the first one I see from Faye is, and I get this question all the time, I actually wrote it down in the chat box real fast because you were talking about risk reversals. I know it could take you, at least for me, it takes me maybe an hour to sort of describe that in the full detail, but can you give us a, a, a minute or two on what a risk reversal is? You know, explain the put, the out of the money put and call and, and why right, you think that's important. Right. I mean, risk reversals basically represent way out of the money puts and calls. And based upon um, the general theory is that out of the money, puts and calls or put call parity should have the same sort of volatility, but they never do. Generally speaking, what you will typically see is that the market may be um, bidding up the, the volatility for a put more or the volatility for a call. And then when we have a volatility for a put, you know, skewed above a certain level, like maybe, you know, two or three, um, or a volatility for a call skewed above a certain level, that means that everyone is getting more and more along um, a put, you know, dollar yen, dollar yen put or a dollar yen call. And when they hit kind of significant levels, sometimes people argue that positioning has gotten so extreme in that direction and there may be some sort of a turn. Very well put. Very well put. Thank you for listening to our podcast. To find more podcasts on options, stocks, alternative markets, and market data, please visit www.isc.com slash podcasts.